There is a long debate in tennis that which player had the best prime years. Some say that it was Roger Federer who made records and won Grand Slam titles at the beginning of his career. Some say it was Rafael Nadal, and some think that it was Novak Djokovic who made 42 matches win streak in 2010 or in 2015 when he played one of the best seasons in the history of tennis. In this video, we'll look at the prime years of King Roger Federer in his prime years. But before moving forward, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you can keep yourself updated. With this said, let's get into the details. 2003 Let's jump back to the year 2003, when except for Andre Agassi, the tour was completely led by young tennis players who were in their 20s. These players included our king Roger Federer. Roger Federer began 2003 year as number 6, intending to win his first ever Grand Slam title. His early losses to Jan Michael Gambill in Doha and as defending champion in Sydney to Franco Squillari kicked off the year in a threatening fashion. In the first Grand Slam tournament of the year, Federer entered the round of 19 without dropping a single set and faced his early nemesis, David Nalbandian of Argentina. The match was a struggle and Federer ended up losing the five-set match 4-6, 6-3, 1-6, 6-1, 3-6. Later in the year, he won two hardcourt tournaments, defeating Jonas Bjorkman and Jiri Novak in Marseille and Dubai, respectively. For Roger Federer, 2003 was not a turning point in his career. Overall, the 2003 season was a very unique season, in which all the four Grand Slams were won by four different players, and hence we had four number one players. 2004 Let's talk about the 2004 season and see if this season was a turning point for Roger Federer or not. Well, it was because he entered the year as the number two player and jumped to the number one position after winning two Grand Slam titles in the year. In the Australian Open, Roger Federer beat his biggest rivals David Nalbandian, Leighton Hewitt, Carlos Ferrero and Marat Safin to jump to the first position. They remained in the position for the next five years. The final of the US Open was a life-changing match for the King as he said so. He also said this match boosted his confidence. In the next tournament in Bangkok, he again demonstrated a mind-blowing performance and defeated a big rival Andy Roddick. In this season, the King lost only four matches outside the clay. This season was the most dominating and successful year for Roger Federer. He won three Grand Slam titles out of four and did not lose a single match to any of the world's top 10 players. He was named ITF Tennis World Champion. In total, the win-loss record for the year was 74-6 with 11 titles, which included three of the year's four Grand Slams and three ATP Master Series titles. Many people say that he had this opportunity because Rafael Nadal was not yet there. Well, it is not truly who would have known this by then. Roger Federer played the whole season at another level. You see, at the end of the 2003 season, there was a lot of competition for the number one spot. But in 2004, Roger Federer was at number one with points double the points of the world's number two, Andy Roddick. 2005 Roger Federer entered 2005 with 17 matches win streak in Doha. The things were in favour and he did not lose the next five matches, so he entered the Australian Open with 22-match win streak, where he lost into the semi-finals to Marat Safin. We guess Roger Federer took this loss a bit personally and decided to tell the world why he is number one. He then won his next four tournaments without dropping a single match, but later he lost the French Open semi-final to Rafael Nadal. So again, this was a time for the king to demonstrate who he is. So he won the next 33 matches in a row. Yep, you heard it right. 33 matches in a row. These included his titles at Cincinnati, Wimbledon, US Open and Bangkok. He won all four titles in back-to-back -back wins. He had the best forehand in the world, one of the best serves, the best slice, the best footwork and the most confidence. Federer was primarily a baseline player in 2005 because he won with possibly the most lethal offensive package the sport has ever seen. He was the superstar who demonstrated to the rest of the tour how to produce winners from anywhere on the court. If you only watch the first minute of these 2005 US Open highlights against Agassi, you'll notice how he can convert defense into offense, find one opening, and crack a stunning winner to either of Agassi's corners. 
Andy Roddick and Marty Fish in a Netflix documentary described him as an invincible player. During these years, Federer exuded an aura of invincibility. When you step onto the court with him, you feel like you're up against the tennis god. He was rendering his opponents helpless. You had the impression that he breaks his opponent's serve whenever he wants, and once he does, the set is almost over and you're not going to break him back. Although he lost the ATP Finals, his win-loss record was 81 for 4. 2006 The next year could not get any better. Roger Federer had a dominant season in 2006, finishing with a 92-5 and record. The world number one remained at the top of the rankings for the entire calendar year, reaching all four Grand Slam finals and winning three of them. His only Grand Slam defeat came in the French Open final against Rafael Nadal in four sets. 6-1, 1-6, 4-6, 6-7 with a 4-7 tiebreaker. This was their first meeting in a major final. In the finals of the other three Grand Slams, Federer defeated Nadal in the Wimbledon Championship final 6-0, 7-6 with a 7-5 tiebreaker, 6-7 with a 2-7 tiebreaker and 6-3 in the other Grand Slam of 2006. At the Australian Open, he defeated Marcos Bagdatis 5-7, 7-5, 6-0, 6-2. And at the US Open, he defeated Andy Roddick 6-2-4-6-7-5-6-1. This year, he defeated all the big names in the tennis world. Furthermore, Federer reached six ATP Masters Series 1000 finals out of seven events, winning four on hard surfaces and losing two on clay to Nadal. Federer also won one ATP 500 Series event in Tokyo, three ATP 250 Series events in Doha, Hale and Basel, and the year-end championship for the third time. Federer won three of the four Grand Slam tournaments for the second time and finished the year ranked world number one, thousands of points ahead of world number two Nadal. His opponents at the end of this year must be thinking that 2007 would be a bit easier, because after all, Federer has been ruling the world of tennis for the last three years. But they had to wait a little bit more, because Federer in the next year was again not ready to leave the spot of world's number one. I mean, who would have? 2007 Roger Federer won three of the four Grand Slam titles in 2007. The Swiss won the Australian Open in straight sets. Federer successfully defended his Australian Open title by defeating Andy Roddick in the semi-finals and Fernando Gonzalez in the final. He reached the French Open final for the second year in a row but was defeated by Rafael Nadal. Federer, on the other hand, avenged himself by defeating the Spaniard in an enthralling Wimbledon final that lasted 3 hours and 45 minutes. The then world number one won his fourth US Open title in a row by defeating Novak Djokovic in the final. In 2007, Federer also won two Masters 1000 titles in Cincinnati and Hamburg. He defeated Nadal in the final of the German city, claiming his first victory over the Spaniard on clay. Roger ended the season strongly by winning the ATP Finals back then, which was called Tennis Masters Cup, by defeating David Ferreira in the final in straight sets. The year was finished with 68 wins out of 77 matches, and the Swiss maestro took home a total of 8 titles. 2008 At the start of 2008, Federer seemed poised to become the first player to win both the Calendar Grand Slam and Olympic gold in the same year. But what happened in the months that followed was like something out of a horror film for Federer and his fans. Roger Federer, after losing at the Australian Open semi-final to Novak Djokovic, the young player who was getting better day by day, failed to reach his first major final since 2005. Later, he was destroyed by Nadal in the French Open final, and he lost a heartbreaking five-setter in the Wimbledon final. Roger Federer in the season lost to low-ranked players which harmed his confidence. Rafael Nadal also put an end to the ring world number one spot of Roger Federer. So, after around four and a half years, the tennis world had a new number one, Rafael Nadal. Despite the hardships, Federer still managed to salvage his season by winning his fifth consecutive US Open, beating Andy Murray in straight sets in the final. Later, in 2009, Roger Federer got back in the game and was able to lift the trophy of the French Open title. But in my opinion, this year should not be included in his prime because the Roger Federer we had from 2004 to 2007 was something extraordinary. His record between these years was 3,015 wins to 24 losses, winning 11 Grand Slam titles with the most captivating style, which made him the most loved player of tennis at that time. 
This was all from the video. I hope you all liked it. Which year of Roger Federer was your favorite and why? Tell us in the comment section. See you again with another video soon.